so let's say then if you're doing an upper six, what's your protocol for, let's say, step by step? How, what file selection will we choose? Will you start with the palatal canal, distal buccal, mesiobuccal, or what's your kind of general working protocol for an upper upper six molar? Tooth? Why don't I cut an access and show you? Yeah, that'd be brilliant. Let's do that. All right. Yeah. Sorry, it's always a little awkward getting all my gear in the right place. Okay. Let's see, I gotta move this a little bit over here. By the way, all these imagery is uh, through a ZoomX uh, 3200 uh, 3D scope. I have oculars on here because I had a really tough case the other day. Um, the only time I use oculars is if I'm doing file retrieval. Uh, all other times, I don't want that up there. I just have my polarizing lenses and I'm looking at an 80 inch screen here. So this little tooth is about two and a half feet across um, in my view line. That's kind of fun. Mostly it's because it's better for my, my back. Yeah. All right, so um, first I'm gonna draw the access landmarks for an upper molar. And we may come back if we have enough time to do the anterior. I've got a really cool um, calcified anterior that we can learn about some more about cervical impediments. But let's start with the molar because uh, I, I definitely want to show you how to get into an MB2 and how to prepare an MB2 groove. Yeah. It's one of the most useful things you'll ever uh, do to, to ma manage MB2s. Okay, because at the end of the day, MB2s are not only the most difficult on average canal we treat, they are the only ones without a line angle leading to them. So it's really hard to get a... a, a, a a hand file that's bent on the very tip into that orifice without unbending it. And that's what uh, mesobuccal two grooves are all about. So let's start with um, the landmarks. Number one is we're, we're gonna have to balance um, conservation form with convenience form. You can't give up convenience form because then you're gonna lose the whole tooth because the case fails. So we have to demand convenience form. The trick is how do you create that and remove the minimum amount of tooth structure? Well, it's not actually as hard as you might think. Um, you don't need to make ninja accesses to, uh, to save tooth structure on a huge scale. The first rule of all molar accesses, in, this is my rule, is stay the hell out of the back of the molar. There's nothing there for you. It's yeah. not helpful. All you're gonna do is create a ledge, right? Plus, take a look at this. Here's my emergence angle from my distal buccal canal. When I have a file in there, the handle's hanging over the palatal cusp tip. So why would I cut that wall back to get to the distal buckle? I wouldn't. And it's just so you wanna know, where's the distal buckle orifice? Just put a pencil mark in the central fossa, draw a line from that at the mesial angle of the mesial surface of the tooth, and you know exactly where it is. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm telling you that because for me, for <laughs> much of my career is like, where the heck is the DB? It's like almost in line with the MB of the palatal, sometimes it's not, 